Number five, repeat the seesaw problem in example 9.1 with the center of mass of the seesaw 0.16 meters to the left of the pivot on the side of the lighter child and assuming a mass of 12 uh, kilograms for the seesaw. Okay, so here's the example 9.1 and it tells us that the first child has a mass of 26 kilograms uh, and he sits 1.6 meters from the pivot point which is located there. Second child has a mass of uh, 32 uh, kilograms right here, and we're trying to find out how far is she from the pivot point. So we're trying to find that x distance. Okay. So basically, first thing is you got to set up a coordinate system. All right. Now remember, always uh, set up the coordinate system with the origin of the coordinate system at the axis of rotation. So basically, in terms of this picture, let me try to align that a little better. In terms of this picture, the axis is going to look just like that. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing that down here, okay? Now let's draw in all of the forces and their associated torques. So first, let's talk about the uh, first child, okay? So he is located at a certain distance from the origin. I'm gonna detail that in my coordinate system here in red, okay? Uh, that distance is going to be called R sub one, and it is uh, 1.60 meters. Right. He is applying a certain force at that particular location. Right. Let's just calculate it right off the bat. Um, right. He has a, a mass, as they told us, 26 kilograms. So all I have to do is take the 26 kilograms, multiply it by 9.8, and it comes out to be uh, 254.8. So 254.8, and that's Newton's. Okay. Now, same thing for the uh, second child. She is located a certain distance, right? Her center of mass is located a certain distance um, from the uh, fulcrum. So I'm going to write that in my, or draw that in my uh, coordinate system here. So that is what is unknown, right? That's actually what they're asking us to calculate, okay? Um, and we, she also has a uh, certain mass, right? So therefore she's applying a, a force. We'll call that F sub two. And they told us that her mass is 32 kilograms according to the problem. So therefore it's 32 times 9.8. So this is 313.6. So 313.6, and that's in terms of Newton. Now there's a third component to this problem. And they tell us now that we have to include the uh, mass, right? Look back up at the problem, the center of mass uh, for the seesaw. And the center of mass is uh, 1.6 meters to the left of the pivot point, right? So in terms of my picture on the upper right, I would say that's probably about here, right? And there's gonna be a certain weight to that seesaw. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate that uh, point in my graph. So maybe it's somewhere around here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a little circle, put it right underneath so we can see all the components. That's gonna be a certain distance away, right? Uh, from the fulcrum. It told us that it was uh, 0.16 meters. So this value in here, I'll probably just draw it on over to the side is going to be 0. Point, I'll call that r sub 3. That's 0. 0.16. Just running out of space, so I'll leave it like that. And um, the seesaw has a certain mass, as it tells us, 12 kilograms. Therefore, there is a force being applied downward. Okay. So we'll call that f sub 3. And take the 13 kilograms, multiply it by 9.8 to find the force. 127.4. Okay, so this is 127.4 uh, newtons. Okay, now, where do we go from here, right? <laughs> so now we have to um, think about, you know, this problem is in equilibrium. Therefore, we know that the sum of the torques will equal zero, right? So let's write that. So sum of the torques will equal zero. Okay, how many torques do we have in the problem? We basically have three torques, right? Red, yellow, and black. All right, so that means torque one plus torque two plus torque three will all equal zero. Okay, let's now expand on the torques, right? Remember, torque is equal to R, uh, excuse me, yeah, RF sine theta. Remember, theta is the angle between the lever arm and the force. Notice how in the picture, if you go back to the picture over here, notice how they're all 90 degrees. So sine of 90 is one. I'm not gonna write it in just to simplify it, all right? Um, so let's do R sub one. F sub 1 plus R sub 2, F sub 2, plus R sub 3, F sub 3 will all equal 0. Now, what are we asked to find? 
Well, we're asked to find r sub 2, right? So this is what I'm after. So solve the equation for that variable. Subtract these guys on over to the right-hand side, and then divide it out by f sub 2. Okay, so we should get this. r sub 2 times f sub 2 will equal negative r sub 1, f sub 1, plus r sub 3, f sub 3. And then, like I said, just divide out this side by f sub 2 and divide that side out by f sub 2. Okay, divide out that side by f sub 2. So notice that on this side, the f sub 2s would cancel. I'm just going to erase it, and we're left with r sub 2. So guess what? All we have to do now is plug in our values. Whoops. All we have to do is now plug in the values into that equation. Okay, let me make that a little nicer. There we go. So we know everything now. So negative. What's r sub 1? r sub 1 is over here. Remember, it's pointing in terms of my coordinate system. It's pointing to the negative x direction. Therefore, I have to plug that in as a negative 1.60. f sub 1, what's well, pointing in the negative y direction? So I plug that also in as a negative. So 254.8. Okay, that's then added to. Right, we're going to add that to now. Um, r sub 3. So r sub 3 is here. Oops, r sub 3 is, is this black lever arm, right? That's also pointing to the left, and therefore that's negative 0.16 multiplied by the force, and that's also pointing in the negative y direction, so that's one point, not one point, sorry, 127.4. And then finally now, let me just move these brackets a little bit. I disorganized them a slight bit, negatives there, and then divide that whole thing by f sub 2. So f sub 2 is again negative. As you can see, we have a ton of negative signs in here. Um, not a big deal though. So this is going to be negative 313.6. Okay, now all I got to do is just throw it into the calculator. So r sub 2, let's see. Now, sometimes I like to work without the signs, right? I'll just think about what the sign should be. You know, this, this term would be positive. This term would be negative. So I do a subtraction and then I'm going to carry the negative sign on over. All right. So... So basically, so negative 1.6 times negative 254.8, right? And then minus a 0.16 times 127.4. Great, so that whole thing is then a positive 387, but then you gotta distribute the negative. So it's really a negative uh, 387 about, and then divide that by negative 313.6. And if you notice how beautiful it is, right, r sub two, now works out to be a positive answer, which look at where it is in the picture, it should be a positive value. It's pointing in the positive x direction. So there's gonna be 1.24 um, about, right? 1.24, and that is meters. Okay, and that is meters. So now, just by, since there is an, you know, if you think about the answer to the prior problem, she had to have been further away from the, uh, fulcrum point. But now since there's an added torque on this side, she can move her mass essentially closer. All right, so that does make sense. And then that's it for letter A. And then how about for uh, letter B now? Where am I going to put B? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to move this on over, put this bottom there. Let's do B up here. Um, what is F sub P, right? The supporting force exerted um, by the pivot. So let's just do this one simply. The sum of the forces in this problem, since it's static, also has to equal zero, right? There's going to be four forces that are present. Um, in terms of this diagram, I was just diagramming the um, torques, but there's another force here. I, I could have, I sh yeah, probably should have drawn it in, but it won't change the answer at all. But there is another force here, okay, located up, and that's called F sub P, right? But notice, it's literally located at the point of rotation, so its lever arm is zero. And therefore, if you think about what happens when you plug it into you know, one of these formulas when R is zero, what happens? The whole thing cancels, all right? So we didn't need it, but now in terms of the forces, uh, I would this would be a more complete picture, okay? Um, if you had to draw a free body diagram, by the way, of this, of this uh, system, you have to include this, okay? But in order to solve part A, we didn't need it. Um, anyway, moving forward, uh, there are four forces in this problem, F1, F2, F3, and Fp. So they're all going to add up to be zero. So F1 plus F2 plus F3 uh, plus F, Fp will all equal zero. Therefore, Fp will be equal to negative right, F1 plus F2 
plus F3. Notice then F sub P. All of these three terms are negative because they're all pointing down. Right in my picture. Oops. All right, so this is just going to be, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna leave them, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna essentially take out a negative sign there just to make, instead of writing so many negatives over and over again. Actually, you know what? That might be more confusing. So let's just write negative uh, 254.8 uh, minus then F sub two, which is uh, 313.6, and then minus again, the F sub three, which is 127.4. So add those all together, negate the sign, and we'll get the answer. So one, so uh, 254.8 plus 313.6 plus 127.4. And it should be a positive answer just like we expect. This should be 696 uh, newtons. Okay. All right. And that takes care of it. So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and look forward to helping you out with the next question. Have a great day.